When does Bill Gates become a good guy? When he started to help the poor people. Yeah, when he, well, he's always helped poor people. This is the fallacy, right? He's always helped poor people. Just in the past, he helped pe poor people by making money. <laughs> That's how you help poor people, by the way. The best way to help poor people is by making money. Uh, one billion people. This is this is astounds me that this statistic is, is not celebrated. One billion people have come out of poverty over the last 30 years in the world. One billion people. We should be dancing in the streets. But you know why we're not dancing in the streets? Because the reason a billion po pe a billion people have come out of poverty is because of capitalism, and nobody wants you to know that. Nobody wants you to celebrate because they don't want to celebrate capitalism. The implication would be obvious. It's in China, it's in India, it's in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in South Korea, in Taiwan, in places that have adopted elements, little bits of capitalism, and boom, there's a billion people who are not poor anymore in the world. That's cool. And you know who helped them become unpoor? Those evil entrepreneurs like Bill Gates. Apple going to China and starting up factories. Nike creating sweatshops all over Southeast Asia. Help kids become, come out of poverty. But that thought is horrific, right? God forbid that news should get out and people would realize that capitalism actually is good for the poor. So Bill Gates helped the poor when he was at Microsoft, but he helped himself while doing it. He becomes a good guy when he leaves Microsoft. God forbid you make any money. And he starts his foundation. And now he's just giving his money. Giving we like. Making we dislike. Growing the pie that we don't like. Redistributing the pie that we like. We do. Morally, that's good. So Bill Gates now, giving his money away, now he's a cool guy. Now he's not a saint yet. Now you guys are Catholic, so you know what sainthood is, right? He's not a saint yet. Why? What's that? Well, but even if he died tomorrow, he'd still not be a saint. Because he lives in a big house. And he's still got a lot of money. And you know what? He even seems like he's enjoying giving the money away. And we know that sainthood and joy do not go together. Have you ever seen a painting of a happy saint? <laughs> no. Our morality, our morality demands that if you're going to be a good person, a moral person, a virtuous person, you better suffer. Because that's what sacrifice is about. Sacrifice ultimately demands suffering. So how do we turn Bill Gates into a saint? He'd have to give all his money away. He'd have to move into a tent. And really, we'd want him to bleed a little bit. Show us some pain. Now, that's a sick culture. That is a sick culture. That says that building and creating and making something that was never there before. That is eh, morally. Giving it away after you created it, that's good. That's a culture that says being happy and being successful and, and really applying yourself and making, making something of your life, taking care of the people you love, that is eh, morally. Suffering, that's good. Mother Teresa is our standard of morality. Nobody wants to be Mother Teresa, but that's the standard. So what do we do to entrepreneurs? We say, you selfish bastards. And they know it, right? Inside they know that they should have been Mother Teresa, but of course nobody wants to be, but they became self-interested. What do you feel when you, when, you be, when you should be one thing, but you really do something completely different? What do you feel inside? Guilt. Guilt. Businessmen, at least in the United States, I don't know about Poland, I suspect here they feel even more guilty, feel real guilt. Feel real guilt. Somebody like Bill Gates is not giving his money away because he believes it will do the world so much good, more good than Microsoft. He's giving his money away because he feels guilty about making it. He's giving his money away to buy himself into heaven, whether he believes in heaven or not. He's trying to buy himself your love. But why don't we love him originally when he built and created and made all this stuff? Because we have a morality that tells us that's bad. So 
in my view, if we love entrepreneurship, if we love capitalism, business, freedom, liberty, then we have to question more than just economic theory. I, that's relatively easy. You saw the hockey stick. <laughs> I mean, what do they got to argue against it? Nothing. And yet, they do argue against it. Not on economic grounds, in my view. They have no economic theory behind them. You have to argue more than politics. Politics is the last straw to fall. The real battle, the real battle we have to fight is a moral battle. As long as people perceive the Bill Gates of the world as eh or negative, we will lose. As long as I'm entrepreneurs are made to feel guilty for their success, guilty for their achievement, guilty for making the world a better place for themselves, we will lose. Economic facts don't matter to people. You can explain all day long why the minimum wage causes unemployment among the poorest of the poor and people still vote for it. They ignore the economic fact. They do what they feel is good. And if we have to sacrifice a few young people so that other poor people can be a little better off, which is exactly what the minimum wage does, it redistributes wealth from the very, very poor to the slightly less poor, so be it. Sacrifice is cool. Sacrifice is okay. And if we, we can't believe the hockey stick, because the hockey stick would suggest that self-interest, i.e. when people are left free to pursue their own self-interest, is a good thing. And we can't, we can't even accept that self-interest is a good thing. Then we reject the hockey stick. Or we find other explanations, or we invent stuff that's about a science fiction. Well, all you have to do is, is read, read Paul Krugman and Stiglitz and all these idiots. And, I mean, they used to be economists, but they forgot. Or they ignore. And the reason they can get away with it is because that's what we want to believe. We want to believe capitalism is no good. There's no other explanation. Again, we've had the best economists in the world. We've made the best economic arguments that have ever been made. We've had our Hayek's and Mises and even Milton Friedman who popularized a lot of this stuff. They, they made the arguments. Nobody's convinced. At least not in the West. Right? You guys have had a slightly different trajectory, so maybe there's hope over here. But my view is we have to fight a moral battle. We have to reject the morality that says that sacrifice is good. Because there's an obvious question to ask, why? Why should I sacrifice? Why be selfless? Why is somebody else's life more important than mine to me? As far as I know, I only have one life on this planet. Actually, I actually do know that I only have one life on this planet. It's not just as far as I know. One life. Why not make the most of it? Why not live for me? Why do I have to live for you? Why is your life more important to me than my life? I mean, that's nuts. That's ridiculous. So what we need, and this is what Ayn Rand really contributes to this discussion. This is why I encourage you all to read Atlas Shrugged, The Fountainhead, The Virtue of Selfishness. What she adds to this discussion is a different moral code. A moral code that says no. Your life is not secondary. Your life is primary. Your moral responsibility is not to others. Your moral responsibility is to yourself, to your own life, to make your life the best life that it can be, to pursue your own happiness and achievement. That entrepreneurs are not heroes because they help the world. They're entrepreneurs because they make the most of their own life. Because they take risks and they get rewards they challenge themselves, they apply themselves, they work hard, and they reap the benefits, not just financially, but spiritually as well. That's what makes them good guys. And oh, by the way, they make the world a better place. <laughs>